I really like the GameCube controller. It's unique, comfortable and probably the best way to play my favorite game, Super Smash Bros. It is also very easy to customize and fix. The GameCube controller modding scene is very active and there are hundreds of capable modders and artists that make unique designs and modifications for these controllers. However, I never found a custom controller that had a premium look. Let me explain. I also really like the Xbox Elite controller. It adds some cool features to an already great controller and, most importantly, it looks stunning. It really feels like a premium product. So my idea is simple, I want to make a GameCube Elite controller with custom features and a true Elite look. I made a quick concept in Photoshop. The GameCube Elite controller will have the same interchangeable sticks and D-pad an Xbox Elite controller has. This will be great because the GameCube controller has a very small D-pad and the feeling of Xbox sticks is great. Then all of the buttons will be painted silver, since I wasn't able to find metal buttons online. And last but not least, the controller will have a USB-C port, with a custom USB-C to GameCube cable. Unfortunately, this will not work with normal USB cables, but it will make the cable detachable, which is really cool. Here I have a broken controller, which will serve as a donor for the shell, buttons and cable, while my good controller will only donate his motherboard. That should be everything, now let's get to work! We start by opening the controller. You need a specific trailing screwdriver to remove the six screws from the back. I'm not gonna show the whole uh, disassembling process in detail because you can find plenty of tutorials on YouTube. However, it's very very easy and uh, there is literally no danger of breaking anything. It's just like playing with Legos. Then we open the donor controller. And here comes the first star of the show, this set of replacement buttons and stick for the Xbox Elite controller. We just have to press the sticks on the motherboard, since these weren't uh, really designed for GameCube controllers, they needed a lot of strength. However, I managed to put them on. So we just put the motherboard on the donor shell, which is black and beautiful, and here you can see that they fit perfectly. But now there is another problem, the D-pad. The whole D-pad doesn't fit in the hole. However, we can see that the top part is just the right side, so we just have to trim the base. Then we have to widen the hole, because as of now the metallic parts won't fit. I drew the plastic shell with a pencil to have a precise idea of how much I should have widened the hole. I started by using random stuff for nails that I found in my house, but then I realized that it would have taken forever, so I said f**k it, I'm using power tools. I didn't record myself using them because it was my first time using these kind of drills and I was a bit scared, uh, however here is the result. You can see that it now finally fits and that we can change the d-pad. So everything is set, we now close the controller. And you can see that it looks stunning. I really really like it. We can change the sticks, we can change the d-pad and it's perfect. Well, almost. There is a slight problem. The sticks do not tilt all the way in, in uh, some parts. It's probably because since the sticks don't have the perfect dimensions, they get stuck with the stick box. So I just uh, fix it by putting a piece of paper inside just to rise them a little bit and now they work perfectly. Now, here comes the fun part. I use this site called the JLC PCB to print some custom USB-C boards. These were designed by this guy called Crane, who is a genius and makes GameCube fight sticks. These sticks also have USB-C output, and he made one version of this board meant to be used on GameCube controllers. I just had to solder it to the motherboard using some soldering paints. I will show the process in detail, but this is actually my soldering station, and uh, yeah, I don't know where to put the camera, so... We'll just uh, uh, describe what happens. However, here I should have desoldered the cable. Everything was going smoothly until I injured myself. This thing is not gonna stop me. Uh, I 
place the pins and uh, now I'm just gonna solder them and hope that uh, this works and that uh, I'm not gonna get injured again. After the worst soldering job ever, this is, should be done. Then I modified the shell to fit the new port and now I had to build a USB-C to GameCube cable. It took me forever but I found a guy who don't know how to do it and bad, this is the old broken PCB and so I think I just need the cables so without even considering the soldering we just do like this Using the original controller's cable and these connectors that I bought on Amazon I finally made the cable Here are some better pictures on how I soldered them However, I'll leave a link to the guide that I followed in the description After a first try before closing everything This horrible thing should do the trick um, this here. Yes! F it was time to check if everything was well done. Here's the setup. This is the official Nintendo adapter. It's connected, uh, everything's set up. Here's the finished cable. Uh, it's kind of ugly, but hopefully it works. It should, I just glued it together. And uh, here is the finished controller. Almost finished, I guess. And uh, now let's just try to connect this. Then we do this, and hopefully... It works! The only problem is that the D-pad is uh, still not working, I still have to finish it. To make the D-pad work, I thought about gluing the new magnetic piece on top of the base of an original D-pad. I trimmed the magnetic part a bit better, glued it on top of the base and after cutting the pin, I've glued it to the base using some paper. And now it works perfectly. Now it was time to take out all of the buttons and paint them. He has a lot of personality. And this is how they came out. They are a different color from the metal parts, however, not that much. Now it's time to close everything for the last time and... This thing is beautiful and incredible. The D-pad works perfectly and is way more comfortable than the original one. It works on Switch, it works on PC and even though I haven't tested it, I'm 100% sure it also works on Wii and GameCube and also on Wii U using the adapter. It weights a bit more than the original GameCube controller and aesthetically speaking, compared to other GameCube controllers including custom ones, it's the one I like the most. However, it is not perfect. The sticks are very heavy, and so they have two problems. The first one being they make fingers sore after a lot of usage, and also they have a lot of snapback. I haven't been able to notice it during uh, regular gameplay, however you can clearly see it's there. I'm pretty sure that it's not good for melee players, and... Uh, uh, so it's not gonna be optimal for uh, melee gameplay. However, for the regular or ultimate or even casual gameplay, this should be totally fine. Also, another thing that is worth noticing is that this controller doesn't give any competitive advantages in any game. It's just a for fun project that wants to add some cool feature to the controller but nothing else. However, I hope you like this project, maybe leave a comment if you want to try it or if you want to leave some ideas for improvements. I hope you liked this video, please leave a like and I'll see you next time.